very first thing what is ip address it is nothing but it identifies a location within a network it identifies your particular device within a network now that network can be a private network or it can be a public network like internet so we do have the ip addresses for understanding the location of the particular device right so it will not only help us identifying the host but it will also help us identify the network but on which network are devices and which is the host to which the packets are to be sent this is just like you know the postal service if you want to send some um, message or say letter to someone right so you have to give the address for the same right you have to say that where i have to post this you have to give your address the pin code state city etc so the same thing happens over here as well that when a uh, traffic when traffic is being generated or when the packets are being generated from the source computer or source machine and suppose i want to connect to the back end that is google.com okay so i have to give the address of this google.com so generally we do use this google.com instead of ip addresses so over here what happens is <clears throat> the dns that is domain name server it converts the ip address to this domain name and vice versa okay so we'll be understanding about this uh, a little bit more in our coming modules but the ip address basically says that where these packet need to go where the traffic needs to go okay there are two type of ip addresses ipv4 and ipv6 so ipv4 is 32 bit ip address and a newer version of ip addresses because we are exhausting the ip addresses which are there in ipv4 so we go towards ipv6 which is having 128 bit of ip addresses now what i mean by these bits generally you would have seen that ip addresses are something like this right so this is the hexadecimal representation it is called dot notation each octet is separated by dot. Now, why do I say octet over here? Is because this number is actually, when converted to binary, would be having eight bits inside of it. Now, each of this number would be having eight bits. So, let's say eight for this, eight for this, eight for this, and eight for this. So, in total, we do have thirty-two bit address with us. Similarly, into IPv6, we have 128 bit addresses. So there are different classes in IPv4. In this particular course, we are focused more on IPv4. We'll be not talking about IPv6. Okay. So there are multiple classes. What are these classes and how they differ from each other? We will be seeing in our coming slides. So the classes are class A, B, C, D, E. It depends that how many network bits are there, that how many bits are representing a network in IP address and how many bits are representing the host. Right. So over here you can see that class A IP address, the public IP address range starts from 1.0.0.0 to 127.0.0.0. Over here, the first octet only the first octet represents the network part and the next three octets represent the host part okay so first octet for network and three octets for host so here we can have very large networks means we can have so many hosts inside of one particular network in class a so when you want to create very large networks with a higher number of hosts, then you can go with your class A IP address. There are some private addresses which are being reserved by IAMP. So these private addresses are reusable. So suppose you have one network of your building, okay, of your office. So inside of that particular office, there is let's say office A, for your firm and for some other firm there is office b okay so all the computers in office a into the private network if they are and if they want to communicate with each other they require the ip address 
So we select the IP address from this private IP range. If we want for class A, then it is then it is 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 to 10.255.255.255. So this is the private IP range that we can have for our class A IP address. So if I'm using this range into office A, I can also use the same range in office B as well. Because these are private IP addresses, they can be reused. Other than that, other than this particular range, all other IP addresses are falling into public IP range and they cannot be reused being assigned to some particular machine on the public network. So you cannot be reusing that. Then we have class B IP address in which the public range is starting from 128.0.0.0 and it goes till 191.255.0.0. Here the two octets, the first two octet represent the network part and other two octet represent the host part. So this would be having a balance between networks and the size of network. You can create multiple networks with class B IP addresses and inside of those addresses you can have multiple hosts. How many hosts you can have? If I say two octets are being used for host, then it means that we can have 2 to the power 16 networks and 2 to the power 16 host because octet means 8 bits and we say 2 octet it means 16 bits then class c ip address okay the private range for class b is 172.16.0.0 to 172.31.255.255 then we have class c <coughs> so into class c we have this public range here we have three octets representing the network part and only one octet so here the number of host that we can have is less we can just have 2 to the power 8 hosts over here inside of the network but here we can create multiple networks correct <coughs> the private ip range address is being shown over here the next thing is or the next class is class d which is reserved right which is uh, generally used for so these IP addresses are not allocated to host basically. These are used for multicasting. Okay, that's another topic to talk which is not covered in the part of this particular course. Then we have class E as well which is again the reserved set of IP addresses. Not used generally but it is used for researching purpose. Okay, so these are the different IP classes that we have over here. <coughs> 